We're going to start off casting into some everyday household objects. So I have some spaghetti, some pasta shapes, some rock salt and some split lentils, split peas. I've got some scrap metal, I've got my borax, I have ooh, <laughs> my ventilator mask, I've got my little extractor which I'm going to put on. I've made a safe area so I've got I'm going to do the casting in here so I've got my bricks and I have a safe area to put hot crucibles down onto when I'm finished I've got a little bit of water here just in case I need it but also fire extinguisher fire blanket just in case and um, I've got some tongs so again just in case I needed to pick something up and move it if there was an issue they are there so I've got them to hand and I'm just going to open my studio door. I'm going to start off with the teeny tiny torch and the teeny tiny crucible and then we'll work up to using a bigger torch. So the Butane Propane Go System torch with the Fine Tech Flame and then finally we'll work our way up to using a great big beastie torch and then you can see the difference in them. But for just now I'm going to put my extractor on I'm going to pop the respirator on and because I'm just doing a small amount I'm going to leave those goggles for now and use my normal goggles and I think we'll start with the rock salt. So I've just put it in a cut down old coffee tin and then I've filled it up with salt. There needs to be enough salt so the molten metal doesn't hit the bottom of the tin. If I was to melt a lot of metal or only have a teeny tiny bit of salt in there and the molten metal hit there and then carried on through down to the bottom of the tin, what would happen is the molten metal would fuse to the aluminium cam. Um, and what that means is it's very difficult for then you to um, reclaim that silver. So we don't want that happening. So I've got a nice amount of salt in there and because I'm only using a little bit of um silver the weight of the molten metal isn't going to be enough to get all the way down and hit the bottom of the tin um, what we sometimes do as well is especially with things like pasta um, I'll put some water in the bottom of this as well anything that can cool that metal because that's a more open you can see all those gaps there's more chance of the silver getting to the bottom of the tin so therefore I'm using a taller tin and I'm going to put some water in the bottom of that one as well I've put some scrap silver in my crucible, I'm just using a little one, I'm going to start off with a little torch, I've fluxed it, so I've put some borax on it, I'm going to light my torch, and I'm going to heat this silver, because I'm using a small torch, it's going to take a little minute. That one's starting to go. almost hot enough so I'm going to start lifting it up above my rock salt, above my container. Tip it slightly so the channel is above the container. And keep heating. Because it's such a small torch that's why it's struggling to get up to temperature but I just wanted to show you that it is possible to do it with a small torch. change my angle so hopefully you can see a bit better. Just thinking about it. Any second and there it goes. Next bit. There we go. torch off. And place it on a heat proof surface. Out the way, turn my torch off. And now I just need to fish them out and put them in the um, 
quench them in the cold water. Oh, I'm going to get the excess salt off, clean them up and show you how they came out. This time we're going for the rock salt again but I'm going to use my slightly bigger torch and a little bit more metal so I'm going to use my welder's goggles. It just takes the, um, the worst of the glare off the metal. It's a bit like staring at the sun, you don't want to um, look at the sun for any real period of time. It's the same with the metal, if you're doing small amounts you're not really looking directly at it you're fine if you're going to be doing this with larger amounts or for any period of time you want to put some sort of protection or tint over your eyes you see how much quicker the metal is already melting the same crucible just as my go system fine tech torch so it's still a small flame comparatively Moving into position, give it a little jiggle, make sure it's completely molten. That's it, nice and molten. So, what I'm going to do now is tip it. Okay. You can see how much easier that tipped out because it was a bigger torch, the metal got hotter. All came out in one bit it in cold water on a cool surface and again I just need to pick the excess salt out and pickle it and I'll show you how it turned out. As your crucible starts to cool the borax in it starts to harden and it makes these little tinkly cracking noises which is normal um, and like I say it should be the borax not your actual crucible making the noise. Um, but it's still a good idea just to make sure you keep your eye protection on just in case a little bit of that glassy residue did go ping at any point. So we've been doing some um, organic casting and what you saw was the smaller the torch, the considerably safer it is and the less um, health and safety things you have to put in place because it's a tiny torch, tiny flame, tiny amounts of metal. So the risk is much lower but it takes considerably longer to get up to temperature and you can only do very small scale things. 
if you're using a great big torch, then the health and safety risk is much bigger. The fire risk is much bigger. We need to have a completely clear area, um, which is why I took it outside to do it. Because even in here, when we're that close to the wall, when I'm on my own, and also trying to operate a camera, it's just, it wasn't safe. Normally when we use this torch, it's a two person job. So one person holds it and then the other person holds the um, crucible and does the pouring so that we've got two hands on the job and can really pay attention to the specific tasks that we're doing. Started off casting into rock salt and got these little, <laughs> bigger bit. explosions of silver so as always I'll do a close-up of these in a minute so you can see them properly um, but we've got tiny little explosions from using the little torch which make nice little embellishments for something there's a slightly bigger one that came out and then a bigger one from using my bigger torch so you can see it's possible with both to get the big shapes you need more metal more heat more danger um, small scale a lot easier then we had some um, lentils some split peas and that gave see this these sort of pitted shapes it reminds me of some of the pebbles you get at the beach sometimes it's got those little recesses in the shape of the lentils so the molten metal's taken on that form. And then I had some pasta, curly one. So this was the one that had the gaps between it. So it wasn't as densely packed. So we put some water in the bottom to stop the metal hitting the bottom. And you can see, because it had the gaps and wasn't as densely packed, the metal has flowed more through the pasta. So again, there's a larger one and here's a little small one. We've got some nice interesting shapes and then one of my favorites is spaghetti so this is the one that's like similar to broom casting that you see a lot of in america and this is the one that gets these amazing sculptural forms so again that's the big bit that i did outside with the big torch but you can do smaller ones smaller amounts with the go system torch or teeny tiny ones with the teeny tiny torch. So let's say it is possible, very small scale, much safer, but if you want to get the great big sculptural forms, just make sure you take all those health and safety considerations um, on board and have a plan and make yourself a safe space to do it. I forgot about the water. So the water casting makes these little cup shapes. And quite often you get these little, um, almost like little pods. So again, oh, I'll do a close up. But it's these little pods that I made this ring from. And, um, I'm going to make a piece of jewellery from at least one of the pieces that we cast today. I quite like this explosion piece. I think I might set a stone in it and make it into a statement necklace or something similar. So this is the explosion of silver made with the rock salt. See, it's got absolutely tons of texture to it. And it's taken on, you can see where it's dripped in between the um, salt crystals. So that's the big one. There's a slightly smaller one. And then the teeny tiny. Little explosions of silver on salt. All from humble salt. Next up, this one's really cool. 
So this was lentils. And again, you can see those round pits and shapes where the molten metal has formed to the round domes of those lentils. My shiny back on it. So that one's come out quite nice. And then the pasta. So this was this. And that's where the metals fallen through in between the gaps of the pasta and make these cool shapes. A little small one. And lastly is the water casting. So here's those little cup shapes that I used to make this ring. And sometimes you get nice big fat cups like this one. And these little splat shapes, which are really cool as well. So this is a really fun technique where you get to play and melt things. <laughs>